All right, so this is going to be a video about uh, capacitors, all right? We have electrolytic capacitors. That's the ones that you want to use for tattoo machines. Uh, one set has the wires going from each end, the north and south, positive and negative. And then one other type has uh, bunny ears coming out like this. And then you just will bend them down. It doesn't matter which one that you use. I prefer these just because it's uh, easier for me to manipulate. I don't know, I just, I like these. They're, you know. So, <clears throat> what you wanna do, is you wanna make sure that all these connections here are clean um, on this wire. There are some secrets that you can do to this as well. Um, believe it or not, back in the day, they didn't have capacitors on tattoo machines and they were sparking like crazy. Someone came up with it, bam, he said, you know what? Installed the capacitor, took uh, away the spark, and said, okay, that's what it's used for. No, it's not. This is used for the speed of the machine. And anybody that tells you that this does not control or uh, change the f frequency of the machine and how it runs, they're wrong. Don't listen to them. I've already I have a video on uh, the channel that indicates that they're wrong when they were hating back in the day. And if I get hate on it now, they're wrong again. You stick a 10 micro UF for microfarad, okay, on a machine. You're gonna have a lot faster machine. That's why the Chinese use it on theirs. It's the cheapest one to buy. It's the cheapest one to distribute. That's why those things are zippy. You put a hundred micro on there, and guess what? You're bogging down. Um, you're slow. You're slower. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna. Oh, and then um, you know after they got rid of the spark from the capacitor, um, they were only installing 47 UF rating uh, freaking micro for rods on uh, machines. They didn't have you know the industry standard 22 uh and 47 and really technically now this is what it is okay lining is 22 let me turn this down all right so now really how it is a lot of cats don't know this and some of you shop guys don't even know this and i i'm pretty sure hardly any of you do but you guys are probably using 22 micros on a liner and then freaking 47 for your shader and packer how it really goes is 22 liner on a fast hand it goes 35 I'm sorry uh, yeah 33 35 on a color packer and it goes 47 for a shader you can also alternate that and switch that up and go on a liner of 47 like I said back in the day all they had was 47 on all machines and it worked for them quite well um, that's the technique that you use and slowing down and matching your hand speed with the machine speed knowing how to do that that's important because you should be able to take a 47 uh, capacitor on a machine and hit that at you know 6.57 volts and understand how you're gonna make it work for you all right so these standards are just really it's just like a fad and it's everybody's doing it so everybody follows that suit most new guys i'm going to tell you this you don't need a 22. you buy the chinese machines with the 10s you're really tearing shit up okay that needle's just digging in a spot and you're getting hung up in skin and you wonder why a 10 micro fraud that's why switch it out take those caps out you know if you're if you're beginning you have a slow hand switch that up to a 47. Uh, what what makes really a liner and a shader is the coils and your armature bar and spring setup. That's it. Technically, it's really if you have a universal A bar, uh, it's your freaking uh, dead space from rear deck and um, the armature bar in the back, and then it's your uh, spring setup and the angle of the deflection on your front spring on that timing. So, really, you can make things work for you if you know how. But I guess we won't get into that. Um, that's if you are really broke and can't afford real machines quality builds 
I am really against Chinese machines, ladies and gentlemen. I, I can't stress enough that they don't work. They just don't. So stop. I mean, I've seen some good work off of semi-Chinese machine. And, I, and what I mean by that is they've changed out the guts and kept the frame. You are not going to tattoo great pieces of work with a Chinese machine and their coils. Aluminum alloy, copper plated and nickel plated fucking A bars and springs. No, it's not going to happen. What you can do though with a Chinese machine is get light shading out of the way. You can't sink color. There's no way. It may look good for a month. If that, I doubt it. It'll probably look good when you first do it. If that, yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of things you can tell about uh, what's going on with the Chinese machine. I guarantee you it's gonna fall out though. I guarantee it. So let me get set up here and let me show you some stuff. For the purpose of this video, if you are gonna track and you are gonna get your capacitors out and follow and track this video, what you are gonna need is you're gonna need your caps, you're gonna need uh, some solder, you're gonna need some flux, if you don't know what these things are, you're not ready. You are going to need a soldering iron. You can pick up that whole thing at Walmart pretty freaking cheap. I don't think that they carry the flux anymore. You might have to go over to uh, Ace Hardware or uh, Orchard Supply or whatever you have out there. Um, Lowe's or, you know what I mean? Also, um, you can go over to, um, what's that, that, that one, damn it? So I haven't slept for a while, so I'm sorry about that. Um, you can go over to uh, what the fuck's it called, man, and pick yourself up. And this is what I do. The purpose of doing these type things, I'm gonna pick up, and I pick up shrink tube, shrink wrap, in a kit like this pretty cheap it's like six bucks okay and it's got all these different sizes in it and a whole shitload of it okay and those fit perfectly over there and then you can um, either use a heat gun a lighter if you want to be nasty with it and even a hairdryer works okay so for 160 pieces for six bucks these little chunks it's awesome and you can go get those at uh, at different places I don't know where you're at in the world but um, you can get those at different places now um, like I said if you've never soldered before give it a shot <clears throat> you can also pick something like this up which is cool um, it's got a magnifying glass on it I've tweaked this I go to like these these uh, yard cells and shit like that and if I see something I'll go ahead and grab it and rig it so this didn't come on this one I like this because it has the sharp teeth in it and it's got really well why I got this um, at a garage sale is because of this piece right here because it's brass I go for old school stuff if you realize that when you go to these places like garage sales and stuff like that you can find old school um, products like electronics and they're all top quality brass and, and good hardware you know what I mean and I, and I kind of take them for that because this is what it comes with you know this thing costs probably like 15 bucks or 10 bucks or something like that but that's the alligator clips that it comes with it's kind of ghetto you know what I mean cheap then you look at this build and I mean that thing's put together you know what I mean and I kind of had to rig it here but uh, something simple not being in a shop just household stuff you can you can pick it up um, for now you know what I mean just get the job done when you need to so let me get this all set up uh, and we'll continue and I'll show you step by step on how to do this okay now before we get started let's talk a little bit about the coils and how am I gonna make this work with these okay well you got your coils and there's two ways to do this you can splice these wires into the coil wires themselves and solder those together at the soldering lug at right here okay extend these out and just have it integrated into the same line. You do that for space and it not getting away um, or causing any chance of being short. But uh, what I like to do is quick change. 
because maybe I want to change this into a, a liner real quick uh, capability. So I'm going to go ahead and quick change it out. And I'm already going to solder a whole line on here with soldering lugs on each end so that I have a quick change cap. If you integrate it here, it's part of the coil and you'll have to break that apart to, uh, you know, take it apart and change that. So, you know, it's all up to you and your preference on how you want to do this. Um, if you own Chinese machines, I would suggest you change out those coils and your caps and your spring and A-bar as soon as possible. That's no joke. Like ASAP. You're wasting your time. So, make sure they're straight because usually they come wrapped up like this. Okay, they come wrapped. Don't worry about these. These are uh, aluminum type. Uh, metal there so they're very soft and malleable but they're, they're not gonna snap like uh, copper will okay they're, they're very workable you know what I'm saying so don't worry about twisting those up and getting those out what you want to do is you want to straighten them out as best as possible and then you want to get yourself an extension because a lot of these are short so you're gonna have to extend them and how do you do that well you got to get yourself some copper so we've got a piece of copper. Now what do I have to do? Let me see if this is this thing on macro. Okay, no. Now it is. Alright. So I've got myself a piece of copper. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and either you have experience and eyeball it, or you can measure it out from your front binding to your rear binding through the coil setup or what I do is I just go ahead and I measure the lead wires on the coils and I add to the middle here where the coils are connected for the, the circuit uh, where they connect each other so I will add in here all the way to the middle here and I know I'm gonna cut it there so I'll crease it boom I'll go ahead and uh, I'll cut that one okay and then I'll do the same thing for the other side do the same thing for the other side I'll measure that and go into the middle give it a nice little cut maybe a little bit extra it doesn't hurt to do a little extra because you can bend and contort these out of the way Get the extra pieces out of the way. Now, if you're doing this right and you know what's up with magnetic wire, you're going to be using a certain gauge. Now, for this, it doesn't really matter, okay? It really doesn't. Obviously, electricity travels in a certain way, and the larger the gauge, the slower it takes to travel. So, but really technically speaking, it doesn't really matter. What I like to do is I like to have the same thickness as the capacitor lead wires. And then there's a secret that you can do to amplify that times two. Email me and I'll tell you. And that's not because I don't want to give them out. It's just I'm tired of these industry motherfuckers looking at my stuff and thinking shit's funny and coming around and selling and actually producing what I've said and my ideas and selling the fucking things. These, you know, I'm not gonna say no names. Starts with a J, but that's cool. You go ahead and sell those for 350 a pop. I hope you uh, sell them out. And I hope you do right with the money too. I really do. Because you know that was my idea and you stole it, but that's cool. I'm, I'm the idiot that, uh, didn't think nothing of it and I knew back then I knew someone was gonna take something now that all you guys uh, know who I am and I'm in your mouthpiece I gotta watch what I do cuz yeah I've got million million dollar ideas sitting around anyway let's get to it there are things that you need to do you grab yourself some SX wire magnetic wire 24 22 AWG I would pretty much go with the 24 AWG on this as well just some coil wire chop that measure that but there's one thing that you have to do there's an enamel coat on these and so you need to get the enamel coating off so that you expose the actual copper for the conductivity so that you're not coating 
this part. So you could either use a little Dremel, sand it off, some sandpaper, whatever the case. Whatever, whatever gets that, you can scrape it. You know, it doesn't really matter just as long as you get the enamel. It's just a an enamel coat, so it comes off. It's kind of like you know, varnish. <clears throat> so expose that. That's that's important though because you need to get, you know, and do a quarter of an inch or so. Or a couple of millimeters. It doesn't really matter. Just maybe maybe half the size of the chuck or the soldering lug. Okay. So you expose you expose those in both ends because you want uh, you want it to be conductive. Um, so just hurry up. Dremel works really fast, but if you have a file, cool. Put some elbow grease into it, it ain't gonna hurt. You know what I mean? Remember though, that's an important part. A lot of people forget that. I remember when I was watching people in their apprenticeships and they were trying to put together shit, thinking that they knew they didn't, <laughs> and things wouldn't work. They'd be wrapping coils opposite directions and they wouldn't be taking the enamel off the, of the wire. And, a lot of a whole bunch of different simple things but they just didn't know you know what I mean they weren't being taught so you don't really get taught this kind of stuff in a apprenticeship sit around and bullshit and go get people's food and set up their stations make needles okay so I'm not really concerned too much about these what you want to do, what I do, is I just dip the ends in some flux. All right, what flux does is it, it's like a petroleum based product that uh, allows the metals to heat up quicker. And what it does is this will heat up, let's, for instance, okay, check it out it'll heat up so what that does is it heats that whole area up instead of just it being on metal and waiting for the metal to heat up because that'll take forever. The petroleum base flux will heat the metal up really quick, enabling the solder to melt quicker so you can spread that out because you'll be sitting there for days in it not melting. Okay, so but you need to you need to definitely have some flux. Real cheap shit, you can get it anywhere. And then <clears throat> what you want to do is you want to you want to then You want to stick I don't mind sticking this on the cap like this okay go ahead alligator clip that bad boy make sure that you have flux on these ends as well and it's good just go get a little tiny brush dedicate it to your flux because it's real gooey shit now I also dip my solder into the flux as well, okay? That kick starts it. And what I'll do is I'll take the soldering iron and the actual solder and I'll melt that and get a little glob of it on there. Oops. If you drop it down there, it's cool. You can pick it back up. That's what's cool about solder. You can melt it, it'll drop. Make sure you have something on the bottom that's, I use the, this thing, but so I'll put some solder on the actual end first so that I can play with it so I you know both ends and I ain't got to mess with tipping back and forth in the solder you know what I'm saying so you could just put it straight to the wire itself and get some on there so you don't got to mess with it and then it makes your job easier when you come to add the I don't know if you guys can see it's probably all blurry I don't know what's up with this camera right now And I can make my adjustments, but right here, what you want to do is you want to make it, you want to make it as thin as possible. So kind of spread it out.
Okay. I don't care about this part right here. It can look like shit. Most of them do. Who cares? Just as long as there's that contact there, and then we shrink it. All right? And I'm, I'm doing this for the purpose of the video and really fast anyways. Okay? Because I ain't got time. I got more shit to do. <sighs> oh, yeah. Get yourself a little pair of tweezers when you start getting into it. When you solder this wire onto the capacitor lead wires, make sure that you're down a little bit. You don't want it right at the tips. You know, go 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 like you know, not even half an inch, a couple of millimeters up. Let's just say half the half the or a quarter of the line of the lead line on the c capacitor. That's how far you'll go down with your um, coil lead wire that you're attaching and extending so basically just give it a little extra because you can always snip off the ends at this point though we've got our joints in we've got our solder in okay now the solder's in okay I'm there I'm cool right at this point this is what I want to do I want to get my shrink tube because if I do my soldering lugs here and measure, I'm not going to be able to get it over. Not the ones that I'm using. So go ahead and grab yourself a couple of pieces of those. Slip them over because I'm going to make adjustments at the end anyways. Okay. Slip them over on each end. A lot of people are doing this for style. Um, you can also shrink the cap, but I like to see my caps. Or I'll take this part off and make it, sh it's aluminum under there. And then um, I'll just leave it like that because it's, it's pretty cool. But most of the time I like to hide my stuff. I like to squish it down and hide it. But it's up to you if you want to leave that on, take it off, shrink wrap it, design it, do whatever you want. For the purpose of the video, I'm not doing anything spectacular. So I've got some major excess. What I want to do is I've got it all trimmed up, okay? I've got it trimmed up. I'm going to stick the cap in the middle, and I'm going to look at how much excess on each end I have. And I'm going to go ahead and accommodate. Now, I did <clears throat> forget to tell you one thing, and we're getting to it. When you do install the capacitor, there's a divot right here. That divot, I can get into technicals of it and the positive and negative and blah, blah, blah. But listen, real simple, and I'll keep it simple for you so you'll remember. Don't worry about the positive and negatives, okay? Positive is front and negative is the rear. This is going to be going to the positive and then the negatives to the back. Always, always, always have this notch facing down and the arrows facing up. So if you see the notch on the bottom, always know that that's going to lay towards the rear binding post. And the arrows are going to go towards the front binding post, which is a positive, okay? So the rear is the negative and the front is the positive. And we get into that, but don't worry about it. Look for the notch because they all have the little notches. No matter which ones you get, they have the notches here. Most of them anyways. And that notch, okay? So let's say something like this. Well what are you going to do because it's not coming out of both ends well in that case what you do is you keep it upwards like this and when you're facing it straight down like this your right is going to be your positive and your left is going to be your negative if you're looking at it this way okay boom right rear left and technically speaking on this it really does not matter because you don't have the north and south pole you've got to come in in each other inside here and it really it doesn't matter okay with these don't worry about that just make sure that it's not upwards like this make sure that it's down and this is going to be leading upwards and back to the rear okay just make sure it's facing down this way and then you can twist it up later these are the ones to go get though because in my opinion they're better um, if I was going to tell you what capacitor to buy there's a whole bunch of them but like this one is a Nichicon and these Nichicons are really good 
Um, they have the, like NTEs and stuff like that. The, those are Chinese ones. I don't really like those. And I am sorry, but I don't like anything China mass produced at all. It's 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 all cheap. It's all garbage. Um, these are nice. You can get them at Radio Shack and places like that. Um, and and just pick a whole bunch of them up. I think these are these are which. Are, yeah, I don't. These are the Relons or Lelors. I don't know. I mean, these ones are okay, and I you buy these because of the light blue. You can distinguish those out of the light blue. These ones, though, pick those up all day, every day. Um, these are the best, in my opinion. And pick them up for like a buck something. You know what I mean? You can get them cheaper too online, but these are the Nishikons. So <clears throat> I believe they're the Japanese. The Japanese um, manufacturer. Now, what's the difference between a Japanese product and a Chinese product? Well, there are good Chinese products out there, and there's good quality Chinese machines out there from Chinese builders. But here's the point, and here's what I have to separate. I am talking about the mass produced garbage freaking Chinese ink and Chinese tattoo supply kits that they sell. When you pick up and you see a kit for a hundred bucks and it's got five machines in it, something's wrong, man. Turn the other way, bro period and if you have sunk that ink into you have fun i've got it in me and i've been trying to dig it out since day one since i found out that it was carcinogenic and causes cancer like hella quick not to include all the uh, microbes that they found in it and the tap water that they've proven it's just bullshit we won't even get into that stand by and we'll go ahead and uh, put these soldering lugs on so i'm out of soldering lugs and i got these tore up coils i'm going to be redoing for somebody and um, let me turn this back down. A little bit of pock over here, some old school shit, because I am that generation. So hey, um, basically I need to steal. I'll put some flux on here real quick. <clears throat> Just heat it up, let it melt. If you even stay in one spot, it'll heat up and then melt off. Okay. Now this shit's hot, so just just be careful. Use your brain. Um. I'm really anal about my soldering lugs as well. I like copper ones. So either that or silver ones. My con these are these are contacts. Anything contacts gotta be good quality, just remember that. So, um, right now, I'm just going to go ahead and secure this um, soldering lug. Flux is your friend. Just remember that flux heats up the materials to allow that, that solder to melt. So you don't sit there forever and ever. You know what I mean? Like, so, so what I want to do is, um, If I want to, if I want to do it and get more advanced to make it look really nice, then I would grab a thicker gauge. Let's say a thicker gauge um, shrink wrap. Let's say you know, I don't know. I don't have no scissors or nothing with me. All right, I'm gonna do a ghetto. purpose of the video I don't have scissors or anything to clean cut these I'm just gonna show you I'm gonna do it one time so what I want to do is if I want to put something like this on over that what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slip it over first and then I'm gonna go ahead and solder here and then I can slip over the soldering lug and um, shrink that just a lot of a lot of things that they do now is for looks and cosmetic but really it's not this the purpose of the shrink wrap on this. yeah so the uh, the battery died now I picked this this up for soldering purpose only it's like a you know it's a piece of metal type of a polished sheet metal or some sort of 
nice metal off of who knows what i don't know i go to these bargain bins and i look through every you know they have these these bins and you just go through them and whatever i could see i could utilize for my home opposed to the shop i mean this is just the quick stuff this isn't obviously if i was doing mass massive coils i would obviously have to have a lineage and everything would be organized and i'd have all my tools in little buckets and cases and ready to roll but here obviously it's just for uh training purposes or you know uh just fixing my shit up real quick <clears throat> let me go ahead and now i've secured and i've added the shrink wrap here and here this is going to go over the wire the lead wires and this is going to go over the soldering lug so remember to do that first so you don't have to undo the lug let's go ahead and just get that on there as soon as possible so i can hurry up with this video Let it melt and let it even itself out. You don't want it too thick there. You have to file it down. Obviously it's not gonna look that pretty. I'd have brand new soldering lugs and uh, everything else, obviously. Shit, I don't know how many times in a fucking day I've, <clears throat> you know, done certain things over and over and over. So, okay, there you have it. Now get it. I have a heat gun. I don't feel like getting it out. Not really concerned. I'm just doing this for a quick demo. Give me a lighter. You don't really want to use a lighter, and if you do use a lighter, use the, the blue flame. Don't use the tip of the orange flame, because the orange flame, that's where the carbon is, and that's how it's going to turn everything black and make it look nasty, unless it's already black. Um, but if you're using colors and trying to make it look really nice and you're using a lighter, just make sure you use the blue flame, the base part. That's where the, the hottest part is, and that's where you're not going to get the uh, excess carbon on the tip of that. So use the blue. Here, I don't really care. Shrinking up. And then I'll use black look. That's, it'll turn it black. You see what I'm saying? It looks nasty. But for the purpose of this video, I don't give a fuck. Just showing you how to do it. Ooh, that's hot. Smack that, get it going. This is really, to save the hate, yeah, this is not great. Um, obviously, I'm not taking my time on it, and these are, this is old soldering lugs, and it's old this and this. I'm just putting it together. I will take it back apart, but I'm just showing you how to do it real quick. Obviously, I would use a heat gun and not a lighter, and this shit would be good to go. But what I can do to clean it up is take my file, and I want to anyways, always, Let's clean that off and take down some of that solder towards flat because these have to lay flush you know when you're dealing with the uh, front winding post and the front contact screw as well as the rear you need to watch your space you will run out of space okay you want that especially the front contact you don't want too much here because it's gonna cause a gap there and that gap is going to mess things up. It's going to offset that, you know, everything on a machine needs to be lined up perfect, especially that front contact. Okay. So just sharpen that up real quick and get that uh, to where it's nice and new again. Get all that flux off there and whatever you just did to it. Make sure your hands are clean too if you're actually making them to sell them I mean obviously you want them to look presentable which a lot you don't want them to look like this all right go ahead and do the same for the other side use a black one this time I'll use a red one fuck it Uh, 
remember to slip that on first. Some flux. Add some flux to the soldering lug. Not too much. This stuff makes a mess. You don't want to too much. <clears throat> What's cool about this little gadget is it can move in all kinds of different directions. And you have a magnifying glass if you're really getting into electronics, you know what I mean? I just use it for this purpose, that's it. Let the soldering iron sit on there and heat the whole thing up. The flux will heat the whole area up. That's what flux is intended to do. Blow that smoke out because this shit's toxic. You can see how old this uh, soldering lug is. I've used it for demonstrations. Homeboys and stuff. Fucking artists that have been out there for 15 years, 10, 15 years and they don't know anything about machines. One little part breaks and they're like, oh my God, it's done. Send it back. No, dude. Don't send it back, man. It's a simple fix somewhere. It's just a broken wire somewhere. You know what I mean? But the heat guns, I mean, what are they, like 20 bucks or something like that at um, Harbor Freight. Harbor Freight, you can get all this stuff. Harbor Freight's a good place to go. You don't want to burn yourself, just, you know, kind of clamp it. This is not a pretty one. I'm not, I have a lot of shit to do. So I'm kind of hurrying up. I promised I would do this video, so I am. There you have it, silly rabbits. Um, take off the excess so that you have a good connection. It's still kind of hot. These are hot as fuck. Stop cussing. All right, so I know someone's gonna say something stupid, and I'm just gonna let you know, bro. I'm not gonna respond to you haters, man. You guys are just, you guys are pussy jokes. You're gonna sit here and talk all this game over the internet. You know, come chill with me, bro, and get to know me and see who I am and see what the mission's all about. And all you fucking famous tattoo artists and all you famous builders how about you come chill with me drink a little bit wait no don't get me drunk i'm kind of stupid when i get drunk just chill with me a little bit have some coffee have some tea you know what i mean have some tea and see what's up yeah because um you famous builders i know what you're up to as well and if you keep shit up i'm gonna expose you just be careful and what do i mean by that i'm not gonna say no names right here but keep putting bad name in my mouth and everybody's mouth about me. And I'm going to expose you guys, all of you, the whole industry. You guys play games. You make these videos and you, you claim all these things. But you know what? I know some secrets. I know some shit that you guys pull. I know some things that you guys do that you're lying about. So just be careful because I will expose you. And you guys know who you are. It's all you guys. It's all you famous fucking builders, man. There's only a handful that I haven't heard from yet. Um, and the guys that I respected all these years, down the drain. Fuck you guys, man. You guys are the same motherfuckers that tell people to go eat, kick rocks and don't give anybody a chance in this world. Dude, there's enough room for everybody on this planet. Especially here in America, bro. Don't you understand? You know what freedom is? Probably not because you never served in the military. You know what? Go fucking serve in the military a little bit and then tell me what freedom is, dude. Okay? That's why it, you got to understand there's a difference between a home artist and a scratcher, man. You know, all you guys complain about is bloodborne pathogen, bloodborne pathogens and fucking and, uh, MRSA and communicable diseases. Look, bro. I can guarantee I'll school your ass on that. I had so much training in that. It's, it's ridiculous, man. All I ever did was work around Hep C. I mean, wow, look at me. I have no MRSA. I haven't spread any MRSA to anybody. I haven't contracted um, Hep C. And fuck, I was around it every single day. Get off of it, man. You guys are lame with this fucking sanitary crap. 
You can't uh, sterilize anything in a pressure cooker. Are you that retarded, bro? There's a freaking gauge on it that says sterilization right on it. It, dude, it's all about numbers and pressure. There's the PSI on there. It goes all the way up to 28 PSI. Hmm, tell me, Mr. Pro, how much do you need? How much pounds per square inch do you really fucking need integrated with that temperature? Hmm, what is it? Two what? 50, 60, 70? What is it? Huh? How many PSI? For how many, how many minutes? I don't know. Maybe 15 PSI. 10 15 minutes at 240 degrees that'll do it fucking idiots go back to my my uh pressure cooker thing you just don't want to sit there with a ghetto pressure cooker doing your tattoo equipment because food belongs in there it's come on man you want me to go buy the little uh, 800 little autoclave that dentists use um because you guys are surgeons okay shut the fuck up anyway here is the um, completed capacitor. Obviously, the bottom is here. Positive's going that way. So when you install it onto the machine, just make sure that this is going up to the front and this is going to the rear. And I'll just uh, show you that real quick. No, I won't. You already know how a fucking cap works.